Welcome to the Anime Audiophile Podcast. Enjoy. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise. Chapter 3 Ostentatious Welcome, Roar of Grief The Bright Lightning Group of which Karyu had been a member, he had said they had taken requests from ninja villages. For the villages, this was a connection with darkness. When they had dirty work, they needed someone in the know. Alone, Sasuke headed toward the base set up in a cave, away from the eyes of people. The village of Takino had seemed relieved somehow after the fire. The members of Dark Thunder had tormented them, and now they were all dead. And it was the village headman who had achieved this. Perhaps everyone was a little glad IOU had succeeded in getting his revenge. Just as Kakashi had sent a letter to Sasuke, he had also apparently sent one to Yugakure. He must have asked for support for Takino, since Yugakure Ninja had appeared to help with the rebuilding. Meanwhile, Chino and Nawaki said they were finally free, they returned to their travels, and Sasuke was here. Well, here's some trouble. A man suddenly stood blocking Sasuke's way to the base. His face was familiar. Sasuke, right? How about we call me Yamato? This man had gone into Orochimaru's base before with Naruto and the others. He had been assigned to be their team leader. And now he was here, which meant. So I guess Orochimaru is here, then. Orochimaru had many bases, but Sasuke wasn't wrong. Damn it. Yamato sighed. So tell me what you want, then. I need to talk to Orochimaru. Well, I sort of guessed that. Sasuke stayed silent. Yamato crossed his arms and did the same. He was likely committed to waiting it out. They wouldn't get anywhere like this. It's possible Orochimaru had information connected with the ringleader in the attack on Konoha, Sasuke explained briefly. Yamato looked disappointed. He uncrossed his arms and scratched his head. Did you contact the Sixth about this? I plan to report to him if this pans out. Hmm. Well, it'd actually be easier for us to coordinate if you sent incremental progress reports as you went, but Yamato stared at Sasuke. But you were working for the sake of Konoha, right? Sasuke held his breath for a moment at Yamato's question. He was working for the sake of Konoha, that was true. He was doing it so naturally it was almost mysterious, even to him. He might not have been in the village, but he was still connected with Konoha. Sasuke knew this feeling. Yeah, he replied. That's that, then, Yamato said, and stepped aside. You sure? I'll report to the sixth. We're comrades, after all. Kakashi taught you the importance of trust and teamwork, too, didn't he? Team Kakashi. Team Seven. The way they looked back then came back to life in Sasuke's mind. He felt like he was starting from scratch, going around and collecting again all the important things he cast aside. Thanks, he said, and stepped into Orochimaru's base. Walls made to resemble snakeskin, snake images decorating every surface. They probably also fulfilled the role of surveillance cameras. Orochimaru was probably watching him. Sasuke proceeded in silence before arriving at the deepest part of the base. It's been a while, Sasuke. Orochimaru appeared, a smile spreading across his lips. He was one of the legendary Sanin, alongside Jiraiya and Tsunade, and the depth of his knowledge of ninjutsu, along with his insatiable curiosity, were greater than those of any other ninja. This tenacity touched the abyss of darkness like a snake, there was a part of Orochimaru that surpassed the realm of the human. Do you know the Bright Lightning Group? Sasuke asked, getting straight to the issue at hand without any preamble. Goodness, Orochimaru murmured. Do you? Yes, well, I have heard of them. But the last I heard, they had been exterminated by Kirigakure. Orochimaru chuckled. So, he apparently knew that Kirigakure had set up a trap for Bright Lightning in order to build its own connections with the officials. There's a possibility that the leader of Bright Lightning is attacking ninja villages. Who, the leader of Bright Lightning, hmm, 
Sasuke's face grew stern at these meaningful words. Tell me everything you know. Hehe. <laughs> you never change, eh, Jim? I wonder if that's the best attitude when you're asking someone for something? Orochimaru cocked his head to one side. Hurry up, already, Sasuke urged him, and Orochimaru's laughter grew even deeper. Fine, Orochimaru said. This seems like it's turning into something interesting, eh, Jim? I'm quite certain that the leader of Bright Lightning is the owner of a Kekakinkai. He was originally in Oyashiro and bodyguard squad. Oyashiro N? Sasuke was unfamiliar with the name. A man who doesn't belong anywhere. He is a ninja, but he's also an arms dealer. As long as you have the money, he'll sell you weapons, so he's known as the Death Merchant. He's quite skilled. He managed to build a vast fortune in a single generation. And the leader of Bright Lightning was guarding this guy? He was, but he also supplied weapons to Battlegrounds, together with Oyashiro. These bodyguards were the elite, they also appeared on the very front lines of a battle. Something similar to the Umbu. In which case, hearing what this Oyashiro had to say would bring him closer to the leader of Bright Lightning. Where is Oyashiro? No idea. He has even more bases than I do. It might be quite a trick to find him. Sasuke glared at Orochimaru. There's no reason you go out of your way to tell me a story like this without anything to back it up. I wonder if you trust me? Orochimaru chuckled again. That's right. I don't know where he is, but I can lure him out. But that, well, it's a bit of a hassle. Did you still want to? Why do you think I came all the way here? Orochimaru laughed again and murmured, I feel a draft. Orochimaru informed him that the preparations would take a little time, so Sasuke was on standby in the base. Sasuke. What? You showing up here, this mean you're planning something bad? It's been a while, huh? The members of Take he had previously fought alongside came racing over to him. Karen noticed you pretty early on, and she's been on edge ever since. Wah. I was just worried about trouble starting. Don't just go blabbing every little thing. Come on. Suijetsu and Karen, bickering as always. You go watch this little back and forth, and then asked, Have you been traveling this whole time? Yeah. Karen stopped yelling and gaped at him. You haven't been back to Konoha? She asked, seeming worried. So you were worried about Sasuke, Suijetsu interjected. Seriously, shut up, you. The commotion was about to start all over again when Orochimaru appeared. You all are being too loud. Sasuke, everything's ready. Shall we go? Lord Orochimaru, are you going out? Karen asked. Orochimaru narrowed his eyes. Just to the ocean with Sasuke for a minute. Karen and the others were momentarily at a loss for words. W.H. what? Sasuke, to the ocean? Karen shrieked. Keep an eye on things while I'm out, Orochimaru commanded, and Karen's shoulders dropped. I can't really imagine Lord Orochimaru at the beach. Suijetsu was stiff. Wait, this is news to me. Sasuke furrowed his brow as he followed Orochimaru. More precisely, to an island floating in the ocean. There's an amusement spot for the rich there. And Oyashiro is there? If we leave a little bait, hmm? A meaningful smile spread across Orochimaru's face. I can't believe Sasuke would move on someone else's behalf, Suijetsu murmured with somehow deep emotion after Sasuke and Orochimaru had left. He was originally a Konoha ninja, Yugo said. It's not exactly for a stranger. But, like, Suijetsu insisted. He hasn't gone back to Konoha, right? Maybe it's hard for him to be there? I dunno, Yugo said, and glared at Suijetsu. The big wars might be over, but there's still plenty of baddies out there. With those eyes, Sasuke will have people coming after him. Sasuke had the Sharingan in his right eye, 
as a survivor of the Uchiha clan and even the Rinnegan in his left. His eyes were more appealing than anything else for someone hungry for power. Just like Orochimaru had once wanted Sasuke's body. If he was in the village, Ninja might show up to attack it, looking for him. So by showing everyone that Uchiha Sasuke is not in Konoha, but rather wandering around the world, the chance of the village being her drops, Karen noted. And if he in serious contact with the village, some people might show up trying to get information from people connected with Sasuke, Yugo added. Isn't everyone connected with Sasuke, like, super strong? Sujitsu asked, cocking his head to one side. It wouldn't be easy to get information from them or anything. Not necessarily. If he was in the village, he'd be seeing little kids and things. There are some people who push those kids for info, Yugo said. There were still some ninja in this world who would take whatever unjust means necessary in order to achieve their objective. You never knew what they would use. And Sasuke killed Uchiha Itachi out of his worry about Itachi being a subject of Lord Orochimaru's research. Some people hate him for that. Karen said. Isn't it like he's making sure that he leaves as little information as possible with the village? You think Sasuke's thinking about all that? Sujetsu seemed half doubtful of the idea. I don't know for sure, but if that's the case, then Sasuke will always be traveling? Sujetsu asked. He might end up doing that, Yugo replied. Hearing this, Karen dropped her eyes. In the back of her mind, an image came back to life, a woman, her eyes on Sasuke approaching the darkness, but unable to stop caring about him even still, tears spilling down her face. Karen went back to her room and took a photo out of her desk. It had been taken back when they were still working as Taka, after Karen had begged and pestered everyone to do it. She had actually wanted a photo of just the two of them, but Suijetsu and Yugo were also in it. She stared at this picture. What you looking at? Sujetsu came up from behind her to sneak a peek. Quit it, you. Have you ever heard of a little thing called manners? Oof. Karen threw a backhand at his face, which turned into a liquid, and water scattered everywhere. Karen pushed her glasses up and hurriedly shouted, It's not like I was actually sitting here wondering if that kid had a picture of him or anything. Kid? What kid? Sasuke? Sasuke? Oh, uh, shut up. This time, she kicked at him as hard as she could. Get out, you idiot. Kicking and punching, Karen chased Sujetsu out of the room. Once his aura had receded, she looked at the photo once more. If I see you again, I can just ask, I guess. It's an easy thing to copy a photo and all. Although she had no idea if she'd see the woman with the cherry pink hair again. Karen put the photo back in her desk. They got a ship at the nearest port. This ship landed on an island and they transferred to an even smaller boat. The path ahead was shrouded in fog and visibility grew worse. The boatman, perhaps accustomed to these conditions, paddled the boat wordlessly. But it is strange that you can move so freely like this, Sasuke said, staring in the direction of the boat's progress through the fog. The murder of the fourth Kazakage in the operation to destroy Konoha. And Orochimaru had committed many other grave crimes in addition to this. Goodness. You're one to talk, Sasuke, Orochimaru retorted, staring at the waves blown up by the wind. And it was true. Normally, Sasuke would also have been imprisoned. And Kabuto, he's a war criminal from the Fourth Great Ninja War, and he lives in the outside world too. Yukushi Kabuto, Orochimaru's talented right-hand man, constantly accumulating all kinds of things in his body in order to learn what exactly he was. The forbidden jutsu he used, the Edotensei, had set the world of the ninja on a path of ruin. No one could say he had been forgiven for his actions, the lives he took, and all his evil deeds. There were certainly some who despised what Kabuto had done, and there were no doubt some who looked to his future uneasily, worrying he would make the same mistakes again if they let him live. Although compared with me, the probability that Kabuto will turn to evil again is likely low. How can you say that for sure? Heh <laughs> heh. 
You don't trust the power of Uchiha Hitachi? Sasuke was forced into silence. Having been brought back to life by the Edo Tensei, Itachi fought Kabuto to release the Jutsu. At that time, he had used his Anami on him. As long as the subject did not take a hard look at themselves and accept who they were, the Jutsu could not be released. But it was hard for Sasuke to imagine exactly how Kabuto had made it out of the Izanami Jutsu, having seen how fierce he had been. Look at it like this. Kabuto also had a connection to someone. That likely led him to understand how to release the Jutsu. A connection to someone? Yes. There was the woman who saved Kabuto after he was orphaned in the war. Knowing nothing of Kabuto's past, Sasuke was surprised at this. She was originally at Konoha Shinobi and actually belonged to the Foundation, the elites of the Intelligence Division. She had an integrity that could almost be said to be abnormal for the Foundation. But she left that organization and went to work for an orphanage. And Kabuto was there. Sasuke waited for him to continue. Kabuto got pulled into war from the simple, pure desire to be of use to her in the orphanage. The fact that he came to my attention meant that his luck had run out, I suppose, Orochimaru said, without a hint of malice. In the end, Kabuto was made to bear Konoha's darkness, and he killed this woman he adored with his own hand. And then he was my faithful subordinate. No matter how dirty the task, he did it without issue. But when he gathered together and used all those famed ninja with the Edotensi Aijutsu, it was only she he did not attempt to reach out to. Even though there had to have been any number of ways in which he could have used her powers as a ninja. Perhaps all of his human emotion was concentrated in her. He reminds me of the old me. In the back of his mind, the voice of Sasuke's older brother came back to life. Those were his words after he used his Anami on Kabuto. Itachi had said that he and Kabuto had both been toyed with by the world of the ninja. Unlike me, I want Kabuto to realize that before he dies. Sasuke didn't think Itachi and Kabuto were alike. Even now, he couldn't believe they were like each other. But he could envision that Kabuto had his own pain that only he could understand. She couldn't tell Kabuto this, but she had also been thinking of him that whole time. Perhaps in the middle of the Izanami, he had realized these thoughts of hers. What route exactly would Kabuto walk down from now on? Was it the path that this woman, so important to him, illuminated for him? Also, perhaps it's insurance for those times when something nonsensical happens. Insurance? Every era has its dissenters. And when those dissenters show up, inhuman powers like ours are sometimes required. Because some things cannot be protected with justice alone. So taming us properly is for everyone's sake. Orochimaru let out a short laugh. What? Your friend likely doesn't have an inkling of all this in his head. He meant Naruto. I guess so. Orochimaru narrowed his eyes. Well, I can see it now. He lifted his face. From under the cover of fog, an island started to come into view, its outer periphery circled by precipitous cliffs. The boatmen pulled into a small cave in the cliffs, and they kept moving toward the interior of the island. Once the sky opened up above them, the dock appeared. Welcome. Welcome. A man dressed in dazzling costume came to greet them. The island was lined with gorgeous buildings, and the people coming and going were dressed quite ostentatiously. It made the heavy atmosphere on the outside seem like a lie. This desert island does not appear on maps, Orochimaru said, and they headed forward between the buildings. Soon, a remarkable dome-shaped building came into view. Arena? That's red as Colosseum. They went up into the spectator seats, and Sasuke could tell at a glance that the people sitting there were wealthy. Furrowing his brow at the abnormal enthusiasm, he watched as someone who was apparently the promoter appeared in the center of the Colosseum. End of Part 1. Thank you for listening. Remember to like and subscribe for lots more.